I do like the element of having the fans come back. Like, that was cool. And they sold out in 15 minutes. Come on. We are fresh off one of the most hyped up WNBA draft classes in the league history. And I'm joined by my girl, Tarika Foster Brasby. Tarika, how we feeling? What's going on? What up? I'm feeling good. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm, I have been on cloud nine for like the last two weeks because all of this women's basketball talk has just been what I've been dreaming about forever. Like I feel useful. I feel needed. Right. So, um, so it's been dope. And I know my girl Cherie feels the same, although Cherie's not going to be with us for the better part of this podcast. We're definitely going to get an opportunity to check in with her later on for our jump ball segment, but she's too busy being booked and busy on assignment and stuff like sis. I know. Look at her. Hey, look hey, look though. Hey, look though. Between you and Cherie, Cherie's hey. covering the Olympics, you on CBS News. I'm trying to I'm trying to get to y'all's level. What you mean? You act like you don't be on TV either, Chris. Back, no, 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 back no, no, you no. already starting on the podcast on this foolishness. You, you <laughs> know what I'm saying, though. You know what I'm saying. It's one thing to HQ and all that, Sports Network, but CBS News, we're talking about Rakia Jackson. Come on now. I was, Come on. Listen, I was trying to meet Dan Rather, but you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, God bless oh, you, Dan. <laughs> hey, yo, you know what's really funny, though, uh, about this draft class is how they had a packed house for the draft, right? And that's not something we normally see where fans are allowed. And I feel like it should be standard practice, standard procedure now that the fans are in the house because the atmosphere, Tarika. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, you know, they used to have fans. They used to let fans in the draft, and then they stopped. Right. And so I do like the element of having the fans come back. Like, that was cool. And they sold out in 15 minutes. Come on. Hey, these ladies, these ladies are box office, and everybody wants to see them shine and perform. And somebody who's always shining, uh, we're going to bring on the show in just a little bit, is Isis Young a college basketball analyst, also WNBA. She played at Siena, Syracuse as well. Shout out to the Cuse. She also played professional basketball overseas, and she's going to give us her perspective uh, of what she saw, or so what she saw uh, from this draft and really what stood out to her. Yeah, you know, I um, had the pleasure of being with ICE for the most part of the um, Final Four. Um, So we got a chance to like really watch these players, some of these players um, play in their final moments of their college career. And then moving on to see them in the WNBA draft was really cool. Also, here's a fun fact. ISIS is actually my cousin. So it's kind of dope to be able to be on this podcast with with my cousin. It's a family. Hey, it's a family reunion out here, baby. It's a family reunion. Oh, my goodness. And a lot of families showing so much joy and love for their daughters going on to experience or realize their WNBA dreams. Uh, and just Did a little bit. Did you tear bit. up at all, Chris? Did you tear up? Did you tear up? Because there were a couple that really had me tearing up. Like Camila Cardoso, when she talked about um, being able to um, provide a better life for her family, that made me tear up a little bit. Um, I think anytime, um, oh, Nika Mule made me tear up too because majority of her family was still in Croatia. So um, that made me tear up a little bit too. Uh, And just kind of seeing the happiness from the coaches and like the authenticity of the players, like expressing why they were so excited. Um, So I I think I teared up a little bit on a couple people. I did. uh, So I was really busy, you know, uh, at CBS doing my job uh, over Uh, there at the studio. So mm. it it was a lot going on, you know, trying to figure out what scripts I'm going to write, all that. Um, So I didn't get a chance to really, I guess, fully appreciate, you know, some of those more sentimental moments, maybe after the press conference. But I will say from what I saw on social media and reading back or watching back, uh, there are definitely moments where I was going to get really, really heart strong, um, specifically with Camilla and just her story. Yeah. The fact that she left Brazil to give her family a better life and then it pays off 
all these years later, uh, and they were just at the New York Stock Exchange. It, it's this is why we love sports. 